Hello everyone, am I live? Can you see me? Give me a minute to confirm. If I am clearly visible audible, there are some technical issues going on. So if I am clearly visible audible, I will start the lecture ahead, but you have to give me a minute to confirm that. Okay, I guess it's working. I guess it's working. So I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here. In the last lecture, many, many, many technical issues and errors were going on, but I have rectified all of them. I am assuming that this lecture should be smooth. So, I welcome again, welcoming you this session. A very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here and today I am here to start with bacteriology. I am going to start cover all bacteria, all the important bacteria one by one in a tubulated manner. Today is the first lecture and we are starting with the first bacteria today, Staphylococcus. In the last lecture also, I have briefed about the Staphylococcus. So, in the first five minutes, we will revise what we have learned in the last lecture and continue with the Staph aureal. So, today we are going to cover Staphylococcus completely. So, daily we will take one or two bacteria and we will complete all the 40 bacteria which are important in our syllabus for the university exams of pathology, university exams of microbiology. Not only this, we will do many MCQs which are asked in the form of the previous year questions of NEET PG, FMG and INICT and various competitive exams for the preparation of the competitive exams from bacteriology. So, many questions come in competitive exams from bacteriology. Without wasting time, I am starting with step aureus. Now, here is a unique thing that I teach the entire bacteriology uh, in a tubulated manner. Most of the students are my old students, they are my followers and they already know how I teach bacteriology. So, I teach bacteriology in a tubulated manner. So, these are the common headings under which we are going to describe all bacteria. On this page, I have shown only three bacteria. But I am advising you, requesting you to take a big sheet and divide the sheet into multiple columns so that you can study all 40 bacteria at, at in a uh, tubulated manner in 2, 3, 4 pages. So you can revise all bacteria at one place in a minimum time. I can revise entire bacteriology in one hour. All about it. All of you all you ask any MCQ regarding the bacteriology, I can solve from my tables. My tables are elaborative, it contains all the information which is present in the book. Now, reading bacteriology in such a simplified manner, in a comparative manner, will lead to you better retention of the bacteriology. Otherwise, it is very volatile. Once you study one bacteria, it's okay. But once you go to the next bacteria, the previous one is evaporated from your mind. So, it is very, very volatile. If you want to retain it, study in a comparative manner, in a tubulated manner. Okay. So, let me start with Staphylococcus. In the introduction, in the last lecture, I have already told you the name of the scientist who has, who has given the nomenclature of the Staphylococcus. What is the name of the scientist? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me the name of the scientist? The name of the scientist is Alexander. Alexander. Alexander is the name of the scientist who has described Staphylococcus or who has given the nomenclature Staphylococcus. After that, in morphology, I always teach you three things. Tell me whether the bacteria is capsulated, yes or no. Tell me the bacteria is spore forming, yes or no. And tell me the bacteria is motile, yes or no. If I am talking about Staphylococcus, Staph aureus, it is non-capsulated, non-spore forming, non-motile. Learning the three things for all bacteria is very difficult. That's why I have given you three mnemonics in the last lecture, right? So, as I've told you, Staphylococcus is non-capsulated, non-spore forming, non-motile. I have given you three mnemonics to learn. You have to apply these mnemonics always in all bacteria. What are the three mnemonics? So, the mnemonic for capsulated bacteria is in front of you. The mnemonic is PACIB, MCB. You can see the mnemonic. It is PACIB, P-A-K-I-Y-B, PACIB, MCV. You can see what is P? P is pneumococcus. A is anthrax. K is Klebsiella, I is Influenza, Y is Yersinia, B is Bordetella, M is Meningococcus, C is Clostridium, the two Clostridium perfringens and Butyrica, and V is Vibrio parahemolyticus. In this mnemonic, Staphylococcus is not coming. So that's why it is a non-capsulated bacteria. These are the nine capsulated bacteria. Uh, except from these nine rest, all bacteria are non-capsulated. These are four spore forming bacteria. Only four spore forming bacteria are there. The mnemonic is BSC chemistry. So in BSC chemistry, B stands for bacillus, anthrax and subtilus. S for sporosarcina, the two C. 
सी के बी एस सी का सी एंड केमिस्ट्री का सी क्लॉस्टोडियम एंड कॉक्सियला सो दीज आर द फोर बैक्टीरिया विच आर स्पोर फॉर्मिंग स्टेफाइलोकोकस इज नॉट कमिंग इन दिस निमोनिक ऑल्सो दैट्स वेट इज नॉन स्पोर फॉर्मिंग एंड फॉर मोटाइल एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू फॉर मोटिलिटी बैक्टीरिया रिक्वायर्स अ प्लेजिला लेट मी ड्रॉ बैक्टीरिया लेट मी ड्रॉ टू बैक्टीरिया so for motility bacteria requires a flagella the flagella can be present at the pole or the flagella can be present all around the bacteria so two types of bacteria are there having flagella two types of flagella are there this flagella is known as polar flagella and this flagella is known as peritrichous flagella peritrichous flagella you got my mock point so both the bacteria are mobile but this bacteria is mobile by polar flagella and this bacteria is motile by peritrichous flagella so there are six bacteria in this world who have polar flagella and they are motile because of polar flagella and there are six bacteria in the world who have peritrichous flagella and they are motile so total 12 bacteria in the world are motile six are via polar flagella and six are via peritrichous flagella i will give you two mnemonics to learn them different dip, uh, uh, separately because in your exam separate questions are asked so which of the following bacteria is mobile or motile by polar flagella or which of the following bacteria is motile by peritrichous so you have to learn separately polar ka mnemonic hai very protective solution hcl i will tell you the full form and peritrichous ka mnemonic hai cute baby sleep s l e p i will tell you the full form so total 6 plus 6 12 bacteria are there which are motile so see the full form see the full form so as i have told you peritrichous ka mnemonic hai cute baby sleep so the mnemonic is cute cute baby baby s l e p s l e p cute baby sleep see the full form cute ka jo c hai it is clostridium all clostridium except perfringes and butyric uh, perfringes and tetany right b jo hai it is all bacillus as except bacillus anthrax s jo hai it is all salmonella except salmonella gallorum pullorum l is listeria e is e coli and p is proteus so that is the six bacteria which are motile by peritrichous flagella the bacteria which are motile by polar flagella the mnemonic is very protective solution hcl so you can understand b for vibrio very ka b protective ka p is pseudomonas solution ka s is spirochetes hcl so h is for helicobacter c is for campylobacter and l is for legionella so staphylococcus is coming in none of the mnemonic so let me summarize let me summarize till now so i have told you three mnemonics the mnemonic for capsulated bacteria there are nine bacteria in the world who are capsulated the mnemonic for the spore forming bacteria there are four bacteria in the world which form spores and the mnemonic for motile bacteria there are 12 bacteria in the world who are motile six are by peritrichous flagella and 6 are by polar flagella so see see the three mnemonics so what are the three mnemonics capsulated bacteria ka mnemonic kya hai the mnemonic is pacib pacib mcv i am not saying the full form you already know the nine bacteria you can say the full form and enumerate the nine bacteria which are spore forming right coming on the uh, which are capsulated spore forming bacteria only four bacteria in the world form the spore so the mnemonic is bsc chemistry bsc chemistry this is the mnemonic bsc chemistry is the mnemonic coming on the motile bacteria there are 12 bacteria in the world which are motile so six are peritrichous what is the mnemonic for peritrichous cute baby sleep s l e p cute baby sleep right and six are polar so polar ka mnemonic kya hai very protective solution hcl i request you to say the full forms again 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 and learn the three mnemonics if you learn the three mnemonics bacteriology will become super simple for you now apply my chapter is staphylococcus i am not interested in all i am interested in staphylococcus i am teaching you step step or your study now staphylococcus so staphylococcus is not coming in this mnemonic not coming in this mnemonic not coming in this in these two mnemonic neither peritrichous nor flag and not polar so staphylococcus is non capsulated non spore forming non motile am i right am i right give me a thumbs up those who are watching me live anyone give me a thumbs up if you got my point if you got my point so that is the summary till now till now what i have taught you i have taught you the introduction of the step orias in the introduction i have taught you the name of the scientist who has discovered step orias the name of the scientist was alexander who has done the nomenclature of the step staphylococcus in the morphology i taught you three things capsule spore and motility 
So, staphylococcus is non-capsulated, non-spore forming, non-motile. We have applied the three mnemonics and seen it is negative and all. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Coming on the culture media. So, I am going to teach you six culture medias here. You have to write the name of the six culture media and one one word in each of them. Give me a thumbs up. The first will be the nutrient agar. The second will be the blood agar. Likewise, the third is the McConkie agar. Right. So, the six medias I will tell you and you have to write one one word in front of them. So, the nutrient agar, write one word. They form golden yellow color colonies. Steph aureus form golden yellow color colonies. Please appreciate the golden yellow color colonies. Can you appreciate this? Can you appreciate this one? Can you appreciate this one? This one? The golden yellow colonies. Right. So, on nutrient agar, the staphylococcus form golden yellow colonies because of a golden yellow pigment. What is the name of that pigment? Golden yellow color pigment. The golden yellow pigment which is present inside the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus is lipoprotein allied to carotene. This is the name of the pigment which is giving this golden yellow color. Because of the golden yellow color, it is very glistering. Chamakta hua smooth color hai. It is giving an appearance of oil paint appearance. It is looking like oil paint. It is looking like oil paint. It is a very important MCQ in your exams. That oil paint appearance on nutrient agar is given by which bacteria? The answer is Steph aureus. Never forget. It is a very important previous year question. So nutrient agar, the summary is in front of you. Coming on the second blood agar. As I have told you, on blood agar, there are uh, three types of hemolysis. Alpha hemolysis. Beta hemolysis and gamma hemolysis. What do you mean by that? There are three types of hemolysis. Alpha, beta and gamma. Alpha means partial hemolysis. Partial hemolysis. Beta means complete hemolysis. And gamma means no hemolysis. First learn the meaning of the three types of hemolysis on blood agar. Right. Now you have to learn for all bacteria, which bacteria gives which type of hemolysis. You have to learn which bacteria are showing partial hemolysis. Which bacteria are giving complete hemolysis and which bacteria are giving no hemolysis, right? Okay. How they are visible? How they are visible? Alpha hemolysis is visible in the form of greenish discoloration around the colony. Beta hemolysis is in the form of colorless, colorless zone around the colonies. And gamma means there is no hemolysis at all, no hemolysis. So for step aureus, it is the beta hemolysis which take place. Complete hemolysis or beta hemolysis on blood agar. You can see this is the blood agar. On blood agar, please appreciate the colonies. These are the golden yellow color colonies on the blood agar. Now, I am not interested in colonies. I am interested around the colonies, around the zone around the colony. So, zoom it out. Just zoom it out and see. So, can you see this is a colony? I am interested in the colorless zone around the colony. So, this is beta hemolysis around the colony. It is a complete hemolysis. So, this is the summary on blood agar. Step aureus give beta hemolysis. Give me a thumbs up. Mayur, you got it. Anyone else who is watching me live, you got it. So, beta hemolysis on the blood agar. The third is the McConkie. On McConkie agar, McConkie medium, on McConkie agar, two types of bacteria are there. Some of the bacteria are lactose fermenter. They give pink color on McConkie agar. And some of the bacteria are non-lactose fermenter. They give yellow color. Yellow color on McConkie agar. So, it depends on the Bacteria, whether they are lactose, they have the enzyme for fermenting lactose sugar, yes or no. So, talking about Step aureus, currently I am interested in Step aureus. So, Step aureus are lactose fermenter. They have the enzyme which ferment lactose sugar. That's why they give pink colonies on McConkie agar. Please appreciate on McConkie agar, the colonies are pink because they have the enzyme to ferment lactose. They are lactose fermenter. Please appreciate the pink colonies here, the pink colonies here. Appreciate the pink, pink. Can you appreciate the pink color colonies here? These all colonies, the pink color colonies are formed by the step aureus on the McConkie agar because of lactose fermentation. Coming on the fourth media, the fourth media is milk agar. Milk agar. What do you mean by milk agar? Milk is giving a white background. Can you see this is milk agar? Appreciate the background. I am interested in the background. The background is white in color. It is milk. So on milk agar also the golden yellow colonies are there. So you will say ma'am what is the difference between nutrient agar and milk agar? On nutrient agar also you told us that the colonies are golden yellow in color. Yes. So on nutrient agar the colonies are golden yellow. The, on milk agar also the colonies are golden yellow. But because milk is providing a opaque white medium in the background. That's why colonies are more good visible. The visibility is good. Right. So that is the thing. On, on milk agar 
they give golden yellow colonies but the colonies are easily visible easily recognizable because of the opaque white background give me a thumbs up so till now we have studied four agars what are the four agars nutrient agar blood agar mcconkey agar milk agar the fifth agar is ppa phenolphthalein phosphate phosphate agar ppa agar it is a special agar which is an indicator medium it is a special agar which is an indicator medium on this also the colonies are formed but whenever colonies are formed uh, whenever colonies are formed and you you invert the culture plate on the ammonia the colonies will turn the colonies are formed are, are golden yellow in color initially the colonies are golden yellow in color can you see these these colonies initially the colonies are golden yellow in color but whenever you turn this plate this is ppa agar plate whenever you turn this agar plate on ammonia the colonies will convert pink in color the colonies can you see i have convert i have inverted this plate the ppa plate on ammonia on ammonia so first on ppa agar golden yellow colonies are formed it is visible in front of you the colonies are golden yellow golden yellow now you want to confirm just invert the plate on ammonia so the golden yellow colonies will convert into pink colonies so it is the conversion of golden yellow colonies golden yellow colonies into pink colonies on ppa agar so whenever you take ppa agar initially golden yellow colonies are formed but whenever you invert the plate on ammonia the golden yellow colonies will convert into pink colonies so it is it is used as an indicator medium give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up after that the last the last and the most important to learn the selective media for step aureus for all bacteria all 40 bacteria you should know selective bacteria for each of them just by maximum mcqs aate hain your maximum mcqs come from the selective media so there are three selective media for step aureus you have to learn the name of all three the first the first you have to learn is the ludlam ludlam media can you see ludlam media what is the composition of ludlam media if you want to learn you can learn it it contains lithium chloride it contains telluride and it contains salt cooked meat broth so three things are there in ludlam's media otherwise learn the name only ludlam media it is a selective media for step aureus the second media for selective media for step aureus is mannitol salt agar if you want you can learn the composition it contains 1% mannitol it contains salt mannitol salt so mannitol 1% salt 7.5% and phenol red is the indicator in that and the third media the third media is 7 to 10% sodium chloride added with added in the nutrient agar or the milk agar so you take simple nutrient agar or milk agar and add 7 to 10% nacl in them so it will become selective media so the three selective media are there let me summarize let me summarize the culture media for step aureus so i will give you six 1 2 3 4 five six culture media you have to help me so the first media is nutrient agar the second media is blood agar blood agar the third media is mcconkey agar the fourth media is milk agar the fifth media is ppa phenolphthalein phosphate agar and the last is the selective agar can you give me one one word important in each of them that you have to learn for your mcqs or for your theory exam can any one of you any one of you who is watching me live can any one of you give me the summary for the culture media of the step aureus yes so nutrient agar the answer is it is giving golden yellow color colonies which is known as oil paint appearance jis pe bahut question aata hai repeat mcq comes in your exam give me a thumbs up on blood agar it gives beta hemolysis it is not alpha it is not gamma it is beta hemolysis on mcconkey agar it gives pink color colonies because of lactose fermentation it is a lactose fermenter that's why give pink color colonies on milk agar it will give same golden yellow colonies as nutrient agar only but it is better visible because the background is plain opaque white milk instead of uh, nutrient agar on nutrient agar the background is transparent but on milk agar the background is plain opaque white that's why colonies have a better visibility the next is ppa agar ppa agar on ppa agar initially the colonies are golden yellow in color but once you invert the plate on ammonia the colonies convert pink in color that's why it is used as an indicator medium the selective media there are three selective media can any one of you enumerate the three selective media what are the three selective media for step aureus maximum mcqs come on selective media so the first one of them is ludlam's media 
the first one is ludlam's media the second one is mannitol salt agar mannitol salt agar and the third one is simple nutrient agar or milk agar in which i have added 7 to 10% nacl so these are the three selective media for step aureus i request all the students to note down the six things one by one so that is the summary of culture media let me come on the next slide so these are the three culture uh, selective media we have seen okay so i request all the students to fill the table till now we have made this comparative table in which we have started the first bacteria step aureus so start filling this table in the introduction write the name of the scientist sir alexander who has discovered and done the nomenclature of step aureus in the morphology write down three things it is non capsulated non spore forming non motile so step aureus is a bacteria it is non capsulated non spore forming and non motile give me a thumbs up coming on the culture in the culture enumerate the six things i have told you tell me the summary of nutrient agar the blood agar the milk agar the mcconkey agar the selective media and what was the sixth one ppa agar the pp agar you know the one one word to be written in each of them let me come on the next heading biochemical reactions are you people ready for the biochemical reactions should i start biochemical reactions are you people there can i start biochemical reactions okay so in the biochemical reactions i am going to teach you few important biochemical reaction the first one is the sugar fermentation the first one is the sugar fermentation sugar fermentation uh, for all bacteria you have to tell me whether the bacteria ferment sugar yes or no if it ferment sugar with sugar is it glucose it is uh, sucrose it is lactose with sugar you have to enumerate the sugar with sugar all sugars or few specific sugar with sugar right and after fermenting sugar whenever sugar is fermented two things are formed acid and gas so whenever any sugar is fermented acid it is converted into acid plus minus gas sometimes gas is formed sometimes gas is not formed so for all bacteria you have to tell me number 1 whether they ferment sugar yes or no if they ferment sugar with sugar name the sugar is it glucose lactose sucrose maltose with sugar name the sugar right and after that you have to tell me after acid whether gas is formed or not formed so you have to answer all these things for all bacteria let me talk about step aureus currently i am interested for step aureus step aureus ferment sugars number 1 it ferment sugars right um uh, okay it ferment sugars uh, it ferment all sugars it is fermenting all sugars but the most important sugar to be fermented is mannitol because mannitol now there are many type of step staphylococcus i am teaching you staphylococcus right there are many type of staphylococcus staphylococcus the most important of which is step aureus here other staphylococcus are also there so step epidermidis step albus other are also there so mannitol will differentiate them so step aureus is a mannitol fermenter the others are non mannitol fermenter so mannitol is the sugar which will differentiate step aureus from other staphylococcus you can say that right so what is the importance of mannitol here you tell me so mannitol is fermented by step aureus but not by other staphylococcus species right while fermenting sugar they produce acid but they do not produce gas they do not produce gas so that is about the sugar fermentation right so you can see the various sugars are there in the in the various test tube various sugars are taken and you can see the two test tube can you see this is the first test tube this is the main test tube in which sugar is taken in which the sugar is taken when acid is formed color change will take place color change so by change of color we will appreciate whether acid is formed whether sugar is fermented or not if sugar is fermented acid will be formed and acid formation will lead to color change right there is another test tube which is inverted test tube inside each of them can you see the inverted test tube inside each of them there is another test tube which is a inverted test tube inside each of them the inverted test tube is known as durum tube this is used to check whether during fermentation of sugar gas is formed yes or no gas is formed if gas is formed it is seen in the form of the bubbles in this durum tube so here in step aureus the color change takes place yes but there is no gas formation the durum tube is empty so i can summarize that in step aureus sugar fermentation take place as it is formed but gas is not formed that is the summary for step aureus the second biochemical reaction is the enzyme catalase all staphylococcus are catalase positive the only thing which differentiates staphylococcus and streptococcus there are two type of gram positive cocci there are two type of gram positive cocci staphylococcus and streptococcus 
both of them are gram positive cocci how you will differentiate them how you will differentiate them so the answer is catalase catalase is an enzyme catalase is an enzyme which is positive in staphylococcus but catalase is negative in streptococcus let me draw two bacteria in front of you so let me draw this is a bacteria this is a bacteria staphylococcus okay this is the nucleus of the bacteria and this is a bacteria streptococcus right this is the nucleus of the bacteria inside the cytoplasm or staphylococcus catalase is present can you see this one is catalase and in streptococcus catalase is not present now how you will confirm it is not visible to me that catalase is present in staphylococcus it is absent in streptococcus which test you will perform to to confirm whether catalase is present inside the bacteria yes or no which test you will perform there is a test known as catalase test so how to perform that test how to perform that test so what do you do you take a slide you take a slide okay just a second you take a glass slide uh this is the glass slide now this is the specimen this is your specimen in the test tube let me draw a test tube inside the test tube our specimen is present now this specimen contains staphylococcus yes or no i want to know that whether this specimen contains staphylococcus yes or no so what i will do what i will do you tell me what i will do i will take one drop of specimen on the slide so this is one drop of the specimen i have taken on the slide right and i have taken one drop of h2o2 one drop of hydrogen peroxide h2o2 so i have mixed the two things the specimen containing the bacteria along with h2o2 now if this specimen contains staphylococcus it contain catalase staphylococcus contain catalase so if this specimen contains staphylococcus it contain catalase catalase will act on h2o2 and catalase will convert h2o2 into h2o and o2 so h2o to water hai h2o is water but o2 will come in the form of the bubbles so immediately by mixing the two you can see the bubbles if bubbles are present means the specimen contains staphylococcus because bubbles are coming because of oxygen and oxygen will form from h2o2 only if catalase is present ye catalase will convert h2o2 into oxygen so catalase is present in the species in the in the specimen you got my point you got and if the specimen contains some other bacteria not staphylococcus so on mixing the specimen with h2o2 bubbles will not form you can see the two slides you can see the two slides in the two slides here also i have added the specimen with h2o2 and here also i have added the specimen with h2o2 on both the slides i have added specimen with h2o2 so in the first slide you can see the bubbles here i can see the bubbles because here in the specimen in my specimen the bacteria which is present it contains catalase and catalase converted h2o2 into o2 oxygen and oxygen is seen in the form of the bubbles right so this bacteria is catalase positive but in the second slide i can't see the bubbles i can't see the bubbles so h2o2 remains h2o2 only it is not converted into oxygen so the bacteria present in the specimen do not contain catalase enzyme so this is known as catalase negative bacteria so two types of bacteria are there catalase positive and catalase negative here staphylococcus is catalase positive this test is known as catalase test give me a thumbs up catalase test so what is the catalase test this is the catalase test what is the principle this is the principle so if the bacteria contains the enzyme catalase that catalase enzyme which is present inside the bacteria inside the bacteria that will act on h2o2 and convert h2o2 into oxygen which is seen in the form of the bubbles i want a thumbs up you got my point yes padma streptococcus is negative for catalase the only test which differentiates staphylococcus from streptococcus absolutely right padma you got my point so that is the principle you got what is the principle so in any test coming in your university exam if you are preparing for your second prof university exam any microbiology test coming in your exam you have to write three things in your exam what is the principle of that test what is the method of that test how to be done what are the steps what are the method steps or method and what is the interpretation you have to summarize that test into three headings you got my point give me a minute you got my point say yes or no you got my point so that is the thing so what is the principle here of catalase test the principle here of catalase test h2o2 will get converted into h2o plus o2 if the enzyme catalase is present that is the principle method you know take a slide 
mix take one drop of your specimen take one drop of h2o2 mix them with a stirrer wait for 5 minutes what is the interpretation if bubbles are present catalase is present if bubbles are absent catalase is absent so this is how you have to summarize it beautifully the third thing the third biochemical reaction the first biochemical reaction what was it sugar fermentation the second biochemical reaction is catalase positivity the third biochemical reaction is lip, uh, lipase positivity there is an enzyme known as lipase they are catalase positive they are lipase positive so they are lipolytic also they have an enzyme known as lipase inside them because of which they are lipolytic lipolytic means they can they can degrade the lipids so uh, for confirming it which test you will perform you will perform a test of egg yolk take a media this is a media which contains egg yolk so try to grow staphylococcus on that try to grow staphylococcus on that can you see the colonies of the staphylococcus this is a colony this is a colony now please appreciate the yellow color zone around the colony can you appreciate the yellow color zone around the colony the yellow color zone around the colony on a media this media contains egg so egg means lipid this media contains lipid so the clear zone around each colony is indicating it is lipolytic it is indicating it is lipolytic can you see it is lipolytic so it is lipolytic the third thing is it is lip so it is it is fermenting sugar it is catalase positive it is lipolytic the fourth thing it is phosphatase positive it is also having an enzyme known as phosphatase so in the culture media i have told you a test which is known as ppa phenolphthalein phosphatase test it is having an enzyme phosphatase so whenever you try to grow it it is a ppa ppa media you know what is ppa agar ppa is phenolphthalein phosphate agar it is a agar which contains phenolphthalein right try to grow staph aureus on that if you are trying to grow staph aureus on that you can see the golden yellow colonies the golden yellow colonies are formed on this agar like staph aureus always form golden yellow colonies on nutrient agar on blood agar so here also golden yellow colonies are formed right but once you invert the plate on ammonia you are inverting this culture plate on ammonia the golden yellow colonies converted into pink colonies all the golden yellow colonies converted into pink colonies why because the bacteria contains an enzyme the name of the enzyme is phosphatase and that phosphatase enzyme in presence of in presence of ammonia it 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 causes change in color in presence of ammonia so this is indicating it is a test to prove that phosphatase enzyme is present give me a thumbs up so how you are proving that phosphatase enzyme is present inside them you are trying to grow the colonies on phenolphthalein phenolphthalein phosphatase media so initially the colonies are golden yellow in color then the culture plate you are inverting it on ammonia so the golden yellow colonies converted pink in color because of the enzyme phosphatase give me a thumbs up so that is the test which is proving phosphatase enzyme is there the fifth test it is dna there is another enzyme known as dna it is also present there right and others mein bahut sare hain it is indole negative mr positive vp positive urea is positive it hydrolyzes gelatin it converts nitrates to nitrites so all of them have some some test but don't go in detail you learn the summary you learn the summary so these are the others you have to learn everything right so that is the biochemical reactions you have to learn let me summarize the biochemical reactions so who will help me in summarizing the biochemical reactions of staph aureus any one of you who will help me till now what we have done okay till now we have seen the six culture medias of staph aureus and till now we have seen many biochemical reactions the important one are the five and others may six total 11 so six culture medias and 11 biochemical reactions of staph aureus you have to write the summary 1 2 3 4 5 6 and just read it out in the comparative table who will help me for the culture media we have seen six culture media it is we have started with nutrient agar then we moved on blood agar then we moved on mcconkey agar then we moved on ppa ppa agar phenyl um, uh, phenolphthalein phosphatase agar the fifth one what was the fifth one i just forgot it so the fifth one and the sixth one two more are there so nutrient agar blood agar mcconkey agar uh, phenyl phenolphthalein agar two more were there no what were the two more so six culture medias i have told you you have to write the summary one one word in front of each of them you have to write one one word in front of each of them right uh, and in biochemical reaction you have to write the important biochemical reaction so it is catalase positive it ferments sugars 
शुगर्स में द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट शुगर इज मैनिटोल हियर विच डिफ्रेंशियट स्टेप और इयर्स फ्रॉम अदर स्टेपाइलोकोकस सो शुगर फर्मेंटेशन विथ एसिड विदाउट गैस इट इज कैटेलेज पॉजिटिव इट इज लाइपोलिटिक लाइपेज पॉजिटिव इट इज फॉस्फिटेज पॉजिटिव इट इज डीएनए पॉजिटिव राइट एंड अदर्स में यू हैव टू राइट डाउन इट इज यूरियज पॉजिटिव इट कन्वर्ट्स नाइट्रेट्स टू नाइट्राइट्स इट 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 हाइड्रोलाइज जिलेटिन सो अदर्स में सो राइट डाउन जस्ट इन्यूमरेट दैम so that you can have a better retention of the culture media and the biochemical properties should i proceed ahead so till now what we have done till now we have done the introduction of step aureus we have done introduction with the name of the scientist who has discovered it the name of the scientist is alexander in the morphology we have seen three things it is non capsulated non spore forming and non motile right in the culture we have seen the six culture media you know the names of the six culture media and one one word in each of them in the biochemical reaction we have seen the 11 biochemical reaction just enumerate them and write the important test for each of them have you got it have you got it let me come on the antigenic structure what is the antigenic structure of step aureus should i move ahead to the antigenic structure this is the diagram of a step aureus can you see the diagram of a step aureus this is the cell this is the bacteria this is the cell inside the cell this is the cytoplasm this is bacteria this is bacteria now see the outermost is the capsule but you will ask me ma'am that you have told us that it is non capsulated bacteria why you are telling us there is a capsule some of them have capsule exceptionally some the capsule is made up of polysaccharide or slime layer that is about the capsule just below the capsule we have a cell wall we have a cell wall so cell wall have four components cell wall have four different things this is all cell wall and inside the cell wall we have cell membrane which i have marked with blue color can you see the cell membrane here this one is the cell membrane so the diagram is like this so innermost is the cell membrane after that we have cell wall having four things and outermost is the capsule iske bahar hai capsule so capsule is present only in some species not in all of them so inside the cell wall what are the four things just tell me the four things which are present inside the cell wall so inside the cell wall we have uh, we have peptidoglycan layer peptidoglycan layer it is a thick layer peptidoglycan layer we have tichoic acid we have protein a and we have clumping factor learn the four things the four components of the cell wall so the four components so there is a capsule outermost capsule is there after that we have cell wall inside the cell wall we have peptidoglycan peptidoglycan right peptidoglycan will provide integrity to the cell wall integrity to the cell wall we have tichoic acid tichoic acid helps the bacteria to adhere to stick on the host cell that is tichoic acid protein a is there it is a special type of uh, you can say antigen the unique antigen protein a is there and after that clumping factor is there right uh, after that antigenic structure resistance you can learn by yourself not very important for the exam coming on the virulence factor the most important virulence factor for step aureus what are the various virulence factors for step aureus before that there are few mcqs polls based on that till now i will launch some polls some mcqs that you can launch that that you can solve with these are the previous year questions which are already appeared in your exam this is the first question in front of you can any one of you tell me the answer which of the following is a gram positive bacillus i am asking gram positive bacillus i have divided the bacteria into four categories gram positive cocci who are gram positive and spherical in shape that's why gram positive cocci right gram negative cocci who are uh, gram uh, negative but they are spherical in shape gram positive bacilli these are rod shaped and gram negative bacilli these are gram negative rod shaped so i have divided the bacteria into the four categories and i always ask students to learn the classification of the bacteria in these four categories so in the first category only two bacteria are there s and s so staphylococcus and streptococcus staphylococcus streptococcus that's it the two bacteria gram positive cocci gram negative cocci only two are there nigeria and morexella so total cocci in the world are four total four cocci are there char hi cocci hai two are gram positive and two are gram negative the gram positive one are ss staphylococcus streptococcus and the gram negative one are two nigeria and morexella give me a thumbs up coming on bacilli coming on bacilli so gram positive bacilli are five in number at a b c d l please learn the mnemonic a b c d l so what is the full form of a b c d l let me tell you a is actinomycetes b is bacillus c is clostridia 
D is diphtheria and L is listeria. So these are the five gram positive bacilli are there. Gram negative don't learn the list. You learn remaining all. In ko chhod ke jitne bhi bach gaye. Remaining all bacteria. Leave these two. Leave these two and leave these five. Exit these whatever bacteria are remaining. It can be Salmonella, Shigella, Vibrio, E. coli, Klebsiella, Klebsiella. After that, Rickettsia. Actinomycetes, not actinomycetes, uh, uh, rickettsia, spirochetes. So all remaining bacteria are gram-negative bacilli. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So you have to learn this class. Now see what is the question. You have learned this classification. See the question now. Which of the following is a gram-positive bacillus? Who will tell me the answer? Gram-positive, I have told you there are five now. A, B, C, D, L. So apply the mnemonic and see the options. So step and strap are gram-positive cocci. No. And meningococci. Meningococca is a Neisseria meningococca, it is a gram negative cocci. No. So the answer is yes. The answer is C. It is Listeria. The answer is Listeria. Can you see? Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. The answer is C. Right. Okay. Have you got it? So there are many questions based on it. So I am not doing the questions right now. Okay. You can, you can do one more question. Manitol salt agar is used for isolation of which bacteria? So you, uh, the author, the examiner is asking you that mannitol salt agar is a selective media for which bacteria? It is used for isolation, no? so it is a selective media. So I have told you, yes, yes, the correct answer here is Staphylococcus. I have told you Staphylococcus three selective media. One of them is mannitol salt agar, right? The second one is the Ludlam's media. And the third one is nutrient agar or milk agar having uh, NACL, having salt, having 5 to 7 percent NACL. So yes, the correct answer here is C, right? So likewise, okay. The next question, oil paint appearance on nutrient agar is given by which bacteria? This question is repeated in your exam, previous year question, multiple times in various exams. You have to learn oil paint appearance. The oil paint appearance, yes. The correct answer is, it is step aureus. Step aureus give oil paint appearance on nutrient agar because of formation of glistering smooth golden yellow colonies. It is looking like oil paint, right? So, till now, what we have covered? We have covered the tables of the bacteria. We have started with the first bacteria, Step aureus. Today is the first lecture of bacteriology. The Step aureus we have started. We have done the introduction, the name of the scientist who has discovered it. We have done the morphology. It is non-capsulated, non-spore forming, non-motile. I have given you three mnemonics to apply. Which bacteria are capsulated? Staphylococcus is not coming in that mnemonic. Which bacteria are spore forming? Staphylococcus is not coming in that mnemonic also. And which bacteria are motile? So, Staphylococcus is not coming in that mnemonic also. Learn the three mnemonics and apply for all the bacteria. And decide yourself which bacteria are capsulated, which are non-capsulated, which are spore forming, which are non-spore forming, which are motile, which are non-motile. Right. In the culture, I have given you the summary of the six different culture medias on which the Staphylococcus give what appearance. You have to learn the name of biochemical reactions. We have learned the important biochemical reactions. Antigenic structure. Innermost is the cell membrane. Then cell wall. And then outermost is the capsule in some of them. Cell wall may four things are there that you have to describe. Now resistance is not really important. Let me come on virulence factor. So I am starting with the virulence factors. Right. There are two type of virulence factor in Staphylococcus. The two virulence factors are there in Staphylococcus. Toxins and enzymes. The two virulence factors. There are some toxins. There are some enzymes. Let me finish toxins first. There are four types of toxins. Cytolytic toxins. As the name indicates, cyto, yani cell. Lytic means destruction of the cell, bursting of the cell. So there are many toxins which cause bursting of the cells. There are five type of cytolytic toxins present inside the step aureus. Present inside the step aureus. Alpha toxin, beta toxin, gamma toxin, delta toxin and PV. PV toxin. PV is the name of the scientist. It is Panton Valentine. Panton Valentine toxin. Who has discovered it? Right. So there are five cytolytic toxins. After that, entero. The word entero means intestine. These are the toxins which cause food poisoning because they act on the intestine. Intestinal toxin. They cause food poisoning. Enterotoxin. Right. The next toxin is epidermolytic. Epidermolytic skin have various layers, epidermis and dermis. So epidermis of the skin is destroyed. So they will cause skin diseases. They will cause skin diseases. These toxins will cause skin diseases. And the fourth toxin is toxic shock syndrome toxin. They will cause toxic shock syndrome. Toxic shock syndrome is a multi-system disease. 
in which various systems the multiple organs are damaged give me a thumbs up if you got it everyone give me a thumbs up so these are the four types of toxins you have to enumerate you have to learn so cytotoxic toxins are of five types alpha beta delta gamma and pv as i have told you one one important thing about them so alpha toxin is a paradoxic toxin right uh, first at 60 degree it is inactivated right and at 80 again uh, it is activated and at 100 again inactivated so first at 60 it is inactivated at 80 it is activated at 100 degree it is inactivated so this is known as paradoxically toxin right so that is the first thing about alpha you should learn beta beta toxin is an enzyme the name of the enzyme is sphingomyelinase enzyme it is showing a hot cold phenomenon it is an enzyme so that is about the beta that is about the beta gamma toxin have two components slow and fast so gamma toxin have two components delta ke bare mein kuch bhi important nahi hai nothing important and pv toxin the last one is pantone valentine toxin right again it is having two components slow and fast and they act synergistically so these are one one word about these toxins the alpha toxin it is inactivated at 60 again activated at 80 and inactivated at 100 beta toxin is a enzyme the name of this enzyme is sphingomyelinase c enzyme gamma toxin have two components the slow and the fast right delta ke bare mein nothing is important pv also have two components slow and fast which act synergistically so if you want to learn one one word about these for mcq purpose you can learn let me come on the next toxin cytotoxic toxins are done enterotoxin describe enterotoxin enterotoxin as the word entero means intestine as i have told you intestine they act on human intestine and cause food poisoning food poisoning is caused after 2 to 6 hours after consuming the food which contains staphylococcus toxin right it is present basically in rice rice and dairy product and it is a heat stable toxin so even if you eat the cooked food the cooked food even the patient can have food poisoning after eating not uncooked cooking ke baad bhi ho sakta hai because the toxin is heat stable right so that is the thing what is the mode of action causing food poisoning food poisoning the toxin just suppose if i am eating rice or i am drinking milk i am eating ice cream the dairy product or the rice which contains staphylococcus toxin which toxin enterotoxin and i am the patient i am consuming it in a party or at my home so it is contaminated i am eating fried rice i am eating ice cream right so it is contaminated with staphylococcus toxin enterotoxin so enterotoxin will go inside my esophagus mouth esophagus stomach and intestine from the stomach and intestine the enterotoxin will be absorbed it will go in blood from blood it will go in brain in the brain it will stimulate the vomiting center in the brain and it will stimulate the vagus nerve in the brain because of which the patient have vomiting so patient have vomiting because of the autonomic nervous system it is not directly acting on the intestine from the intestine it is absorbing going in the blood from the blood it is going in the brain in the brain it is stimulating vomiting center so patient will have vomiting and the, and it is stimulating the vagus nerve because of the vagus nerve there is increased peristalsis so it will lead to diarrhea so patient have diarrhea as well as vomiting have you got it so that is enterotoxin it is it is a type of super antigen and it is very potent so about the enterotoxin i have told you everything how it causes diarrhea how it causes vomiting what is the incubation period the incubation period is 2 to 6 hours you got my point the third type of toxin is toxic shock syndrome toxin the next toxin is toxic shock syndrome toxin right so toxic shock syndrome toxin is also known as pyrogenic exotoxin c right it is heat resistant and it is a toxin it is a super antigen which causes damage to multiple organs in human being it causes multiple organ dysfunction right so that is toxic shock syndrome and last is epidermolytic toxin as the name indicate the skin have two layers epidermis and dermis so it will destroy the epidermis of the skin right so that is epidermolytic toxin epidermolytic toxin it will cause staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome sssss so that is the summary of the toxin this is sssss you can see the epidermis is separated from the dermis because of the epidermolytic toxin right that is the thing so i am done with all toxins you know the summary of cytolytic toxin enterotoxin which causes food poisoning toxic shock syndrome toxin which causes toxic shock syndrome and epidermolytic toxin which causes scalded skin syndrome staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome sssss that is a skin disorder so that is the summary and this this cytolytic toxins they will cause destruction of various cells in human body so that is the summary of the toxins after toxins we have enzymes let me finish enzymes also the important enzymes so important enzymes there are many enzymes 
कॉर्ग्यूलेस कैटेलेस हेलियोरिडेस फिब्रिनोलाइसिन लाइपेस न्यूक्लियस पैनिसिलिनेस ऑल दीज एंजाइम्स आर प्रेजेंट इनसाइड द बैक्टीरिया which bacteria i am talking about i am talking about staphylococcus all these enzymes are present inside staphylococcus so i am interested in two enzymes coagulase and catalase right so coagulase these are coagulase positive as well as catalase positive coagulase is of two types the pre coagulase which is the enzyme and the bound coagulase which is known as clumping 